Thank you so much. Uh, both teams starting off 0-1 is not inspirational, but with two L's, we can make, <laughs> maybe make that a win today. Somebody is guaranteed a win today. Redbird Esports coming off a storm, not the good kind from yesterday. Uh, the double header today is not fun. Starting off on a loss, not great either, but New York Excelsior, uh, with the right pieces, the right composition that they've been cycling around, it's, it's an interesting look from them. Yeah, I think that New York Excelsior have a very strong roster, and as you can see, your boy can rock a good monochrome, so you've got some very strong fashion sense as well, New York uh, Excelsior Logistics Department, also size large. We're going to be heading to Ilios first. Uh, well, you know what, why did Vadesco get to appeal for the merch, Lemon? Let's head over into our map itself, and Fitz is in, which is a big one for New York Excelsior. They didn't play Fitz for 100% of the game time against the Houston Outlaws, but when he looked in, he looked bloody good, and why not? He is a legendary player, previously of the Soul Dynasty, I believe they were second place at one point, going deep into the depths of Overwatch League playoffs before Fitz knows what it's like to feel the pressure of being 0-1. I think with the Fitz psycho lineup, from what we've seen so far, this favors the double flanker that they've been going towards, the oh. Sombra and the Tracer around Kellen's dive. I think why New York feel like a step behind. Obviously, they have to play Houston, who are one of the favorites. They're very goaded right now, but it's more about the coordination around the hacks of Fitz, Psycho's Tracer, and then this is a mixed roster where there's Koreans, English speakers, etc. We'll see how they come together, especially Redbirds at Redbird Esports around Gig, where previously they played around Moving Fish. Yeah, New York as well. I think yet to announce who's in the back room. We don't we don't know who the brains behind this operation is. It's uh, it's anybody's game, and well, those new skins for New York Excelsior also look pretty nice, black and blue. They might leave uh, Redbird Esports black and blue here as Psycho's opening up on the Echo. Getting slightly bullied out by Deco. A brave fight to take as a Lucio, and we got ourselves a quick pause as I get up from my chair to get on camera. Yeah, me too. I, <laughs> I fell over there as uh, some people are. Having that, uh, this is a, I believe, was it a New York Excelsior map choice? And we kind of, we can break this down more where the double flanker I uh, thought was going to be the choice. But Psycho is a flex player coming out of Europe who has had really good success there. And anything from the Echo is in his wheelhouse. Now that the skies are unlimited on Lighthouse, this is a good pick. He'll have to rely on the break packs from Lep. And maybe even a Nano Echo is a big win condition if they feel like Psycho can really pull off a clutch. Yeah, Psycho's had a long tenure with uh, with teams like Falcons Esports. And one of the things that's really interesting here about the Fitz narrative as well is that he's finally moving out, which is like Stalker, actually. We have two players who are moving out from under the shadow of Prophet's Tracer, the GOAT himself, and now get to finally build their own identity as DPS. And if that means Fitz has got a really good Tracer, I'd be more than happy to see it. And Vision on the Ash. We've already talked about kind of the choice of Ash against Dive to just... Well, be able to coach gun up high grounds a lot easier, but also coach gun back some annoying Winstons. And this first fight goes to Redbird Esports. Vision, uh, Vision's the guy. The Vision has that magic source in him, you know? When it comes to clutching up in fights, if you watch the Prime Qualifiers, I highly recommend if you haven't going back and watching Vision on Redbirds playing those. It's a little bit magic. Ooh! We cut away from the magic, but ta-da! Blink and the trace is gone. <laughs> Redbird Esports 2 holding the high ground where New York are trying to establish themselves off of. And we've already seen kind of just mixed success around just Brigida usage to ward off a dive, just especially how the ultimate isn't as strong as a lot of the other support ultimates, uh, including Kitsune Rush amongst others. Here's a dive now from Kellen to dislodge Vision from the high ground. Suzu forced out from Ranko to deal with some of the CC, pocketing Vision as much as they can against Psycho who got nanoed. Not able to get a finishing blow until now. Kellen and Psycho working well together, and maybe Redbird Esports overstaying their welcome on the high ground. But it's a common language. Dive high ground is universal. I mean, Kellen has actually got a huge amount of work cut out for him there, going up against a mostly air or high ground born composition in Redbird Esports, because they like to set up the exit, it means that Fitz can't access them easily. And the only players that Fitz can go after generally can do them pretty well, like the Ash. At the moment, though, Fitz feeling sneaky. And now about that setup on high ground, it's easier to pass to a pulse bomb. We also have maybe Grafen anchoring the point, successfully getting the flip despite New York being around. And Grafen punishes Lev, who maybe tried to duel him. Full spot. 
New York only having creative to deal with and trying to heal as Nada with all the Winston bubbles around is a tough task. Renko with the Katsune rush gets chased down by Fitz eventually even through the teleport as the sound bear is now being committed by Deco while Renko is missing to make up for those resources. As this is left with what a four versus three at the end and Redbird Esports clean it up. Excellent engagement there with the Bob from Vision, and it feels like Vision's taking advantage of Nuoki Celsius, maybe not scrimming against as much Ash recently. We definitely saw a little bit more from the contenders teams, especially in Red Bird Esports' previous matchup. We saw Quartz play the Ash as well in that Ramatra versus Ramatra, and the Bob can do a lot to change the calculus of how a Winston team's going to manage their engages without the ability to really effectively duel the Bob. Still Grafton did an amazing job of flipping the point, full spawning left. Speaking of which, having the rally, the Nano on to Kellen, Psycho duplicates a Tracer. You just have so much committed in terms of ultimates for New York, and not netting necessarily a ton of kills from it. It's Redbird Esports that gladly disengage from that fight to tell the tale uh, on another day, as I'd rather... Uh, Except the death of too. But uh, New York Excelsior will clean up even more kills from that commitment. It's okay, the Diablo 4 open beta isn't happening anymore. Uh, I... <laughs> Feels I bad, man. I got, I got that wolf up. I was, a, I was a very happy boy. Grathen staggered here by Kellen. And New York Excelsior now once again in this commanding defensive posture. Remember, we talked earlier uh, during the Twisted Minds games about how good it is to defend with an aerial force like an Echo, like a Pharah, because you can get those easy poke phases in and really try and stress the resources of an attacking team before they reach the objective. Psycho's going to have to be very judicious with how he uses his right leg stickies. Psycho is anchoring the point, making sure that Grafton isn't getting a free flip like he did last time. Last fight for round one, and it starts with a primal on the creative. He's actually getting pushed back towards his team. Here's left for support. Gig decides to go back to his team. Kitsune rush from Ranko right on that objective as Redford Esports were successful at flipping this over while Gig was making the space. Now Kellen's been nanoed. Last chance for New York to have a save, but a bob in the middle of the field from Vision makes it so difficult for New York to maneuver around this. And still, Redbird Esports just barely holding on. New York will be successful at the flip. It's 4v3 as Redbird Esports head for the hills. Oh, and Kellen's going to be able to be healed up here. New York is also only need to win one more fight, and Giggs only just respawned. Handing over a little bit of that additional ultimate charge. Psycho almost here with the duplicate and Deco. Going to be the main tempo setter of this fight with the Samba. If he falls early, this could be all over. Now it's last fight with these quick disengages, man. There's quite a few. The sound barrier from Deco, 4v4 after a finish on the left. Bubble on the for Kellen to just provide safety for Fitz. Cleans up the rest of the supports. Redbird Esports only have Grafton still kicking around. Gig jumps back in. Renko will be able to teleport to provide support with the pulse from Fitz. He went buck wild at the end to give New York to win in round one. It's been a fantastic game from Fit so far, even without access to the back line at the beginning who are playing up on that high ground. Fitz most, uh, actually not the most killing blows on his team, actually belongs to Kellen with six. And one of the things that we haven't really talked about yet is that this is a Kellen redemption arc on this team. Uh, his Fitz managing to get most of those killing blows here by hunting down any wayward members of New York Excelsior. But Kellen, let's be charitable and say he had an uninspiring last year on the New York Excelsior. But this could be the year where Kellen really revives the pedigree of having been an element mystic tank. I thought there'd be so much more from him, given the scouting chops that we know Rush and the element mystic cadre have. And it did flop a little bit. But this year, Kellen could yeah. really come into his own with a support line like Lep and Creative. And Lep's been looking really good in the USA Trials, as Cus has already pointed out. And Fitz, surprising that he feels comfortable playing the Hanzo against the Dive of Redbird Esports, maybe underestimating the pressure they can really put on him, because I was expecting a Sombra Mirror. So Vision having that health pack hacked for Gig is a good fallback spot for this dive, especially more health for them, as Fitz is just laying it down for onto Kellen. Or, uh, sorry, onto Gig. As the point is still being unlocked, still being capped, and just Redford having a more mobile comp. They can anchor that 
were able to cap it first, and now they go for the fight. They dive in. Vision has recalled back, or has translocated back. Grafton's being conservative with his life. And Giga actually gets two-man anti there by Creative, and that's the deadly blow for New York. Oh, you needed Renko to be the one to come in and cleanse that away, so the first healing could be delivered. Beautiful grenade there from Creative to strike a killing blow on the tank. But what I wanted to talk about before the anti really messed up everything for Gig is that having that health back there actually means that Renko can save on how many times he needs to swift step over to Gig. And it means that Renko can actually play a lot more safely or a lot more aggressively supporting Grafton, not having to worry about babysitting Gig when the burst healing comes from a mega. This is Fitz under fire, Pulse Bomb misses. He has access to the high ground. He gets a punishing headshot onto Deco. Sound Bearer, three man from left, just to salvage the situation, especially save Kellen. Creative even has a nano if New York thinks this is winnable. Without Ranko, I don't think Redbird Esports have the, the resources to pull this off. And that's tough to see a fight lost from them when they use the Katsune rush. And the EMP as well, a major tool that was necessary for a Redbird take here against New York Excelsior. Kellen can now play these aggressive angles. The Primal Rage, the get out of jail free card with that extra 1000 HP means that you can really try and force out that teleport from Renko and then Psycho can try and clean up afterwards. Nano to Fitz. Can he hit a shot though? That's what matters. Oh, the sound there in time as Vision was getting looked at. Giga oh. slept too, so Redbird Esports lost so much momentum off of just coordinated plays from New York. Trades back and forth though, looking back, it's 3v3, but New York are taking fights at different locations, but if they win their duels, that's all that really matters. Kellen, even unsure of how this fight is progressing, feels the need to commit the Primal Rage so New York don't lose the hold on this fight. Primal Rage being committed, not ideal, and Creative swapped over now. On to the more mobile Kiriko in order to potentially try and avoid some of the dives that are coming the way from Redbird Esports. Kellen's gonna be the front line here. However, it looks like it was, oh, that's a lot of resources to keep Deco alive. 4v4, now 4v3 for New York, just needing to fall back to the point. It's Gig and Graf, and they gotta deal with and remove physically Gig, not able to pop the Primal. I wonder if he was hacked by Fitz. The punish is there, 3v1, Graf and buying time, but actually Renko was able to teleport forward, and here comes Deco out of spawn. Renko so close to Katsune Rush too. This is not over yet. It's 3v2 favoring Redbird Esports. Kellen decided to give this up, so you're not giving too much old charge it's over. Redbird Esports will live for now. Live a little bit longer and live with some resource in the back pocket. Yes, Renko died before he could bring the Kitsune Rush out, but that means it's now available for these defensive fights as well. Vision, the last EMP was a little bit lackluster. The follow-up was not there, but with the time here to generate some information for a dive beforehand, it could be a lot better. And with Lep and Creative both spotted, this could be a big EMP. EMP? Uh, it only hits Kellen. Huh? Is it it? Oh, I think it got Suzu by, by Creative. Or Suzu? I don't know. We'll have to check the replay. Salmir from left. New York still have their own EMP to work with. Might want to wait out the Kitsune rush that Renko left behind. Gig 2 and Primal. Grab it! Double kill in the back! Huge turn for Redbird Esports as he reached 65 plus. Even with a clutch Suzu that I imagine happened from Creative there, it was not enough to keep Kellen alive and the rest of New York Excelsior. Fitz, the EMP in his hands. Could be the hero here to claim the map for his brand new team. The scouting's good. Yeah, one man EMP, I guess you take it. Fitz confirming that, translocating back before his own death, but he trade that with Psycho. 4v4, Katsune rush buff for New York. Just needs to call us on the right targets. Renko in access here to the right side. Vision found out of his translocator. No longer has that. Redbird Esports just playing it safe towards the point. Without Renko, they don't have the healing for an extended fight. So they have to play their life. They have to play the Mega. And Redbird Esports have the point flipped. Overtime about to run away. And New York Excelsior not... Oh, actually, they did have the points. New York, that flip. Man, that was a crazy, chaotic fight at the end. New York did not, uh, not one. 
that was a bloody crazy fight, Lemon. And unfortunately, in the middle of that, we had Vision who was trying to TP away from the incoming Winston dive on the other side. Graffin blinked in under it, so it took too much damage from the leaping gauge, and it simply couldn't be handled by Deco alone. Overall, I liked the strategy from Redbird to try and play like a cycle contest on 99%, waiting for Renko to come back. No, they couldn't really fight that without the Kiriko heals that would provide the burst necessary. Still, in the end, a lot of mechanical duels went the way of the New York Excelsior, including Kellen looking bloody good on that Winston. That was real close. And I mean, a lot sloppier dives compared to the two that we saw in our previous series. But both these teams, I mean, one being from contenders, the other just pieces of different rosters, still trying to learn how to communicate on a mixed roster. I mean, we'll see if map number two will have a cleaner situation. New York Excelsior are up in the series on match point, And we'll see you on the other side of this break. Let me 
MVPs because I feel like that one won. I was kind of peppy jamming at the end there, and I, I don't know. I got into it. I kind of forgot what this intro was all about. <laughs> but hey, that was a that was a messy map one. Not gonna lie. I mean, the old alt usage I was not a fan of. Even some picks like the Hanzo from Fitz. You have one man EMPs happening. Kitsune rush fight losses, and then dying immediately after. Primal rages when the fight was done. It, it's a it was a weird map one. Not gonna lie. Yeah, it was a, a weird map one, let's be real, but it's okay. We're gonna we're gonna swap around some rosters, temper in the weirdness, and maybe go back to something that's a little bit more codified. We have Fitz well, toddling on off for a little sit down and a poo. Uh, while Shockwave <laughs> comes in <laughs> instead to play what I expect to be a little bit more of a Hanzo here, Lennon. You, you lost me. <laughs> okay, <I'm>, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yes, I I'm did. Ex I'm expecting some rush. We'll look over to Redbird Esports' lineup. They brought Moving Fish in over Gig, who played already earlier on today. Looked really good on the Ramatra. I'm expecting a, a ram off between Ramatra off. I think I like that better. A Ramatra off between Moving Fish and Kellen, where <laughs> I thought... You know, Redbird Esports looked really good off of uh, moving fish, especially on Coliseo there. But we'll see how this one goes. It is match point for Redbird Esports. Yeah, Redbird looking, uh... Huh? I was fairly sure that New York won the last game, but... Oh, maybe yeah, I'm wait. losing my mind. We are losing our New York <laughs> <Yeah>. definitely won. <laughs> that one, that one <laughs> she's testing my brain. I don't have one today. You've lost you me, Lemon. You've lost me. <laughs> I think I, I think I debated them too because I said Redford <laughs> won, and then I was like, no, psych. New York did. You know, it's a day of all time. <laughs> it is April Fool, so we like to be uh, attempt to be funny. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Uh, em emphasis on the attempt from me. Haha, <laughs> a comedy coming back at you again. Here we are on King's Row. We're heading over to Man Streets. Moving fish in to play the Ramatra. Kellen, I would not be surprised to uh, see a counter Amatra at some point. But uh, we'll get that scoreboard fixed up for you real soon, unless I'm having a collective fever dream here about what happened on Elios. Uh, <laughs> moving fish slowly. Slowly they do be moving. We are currently seeing limited locomotion fish as a pause is called. Uh, maybe a slightly broken W key there for moving fish. That would be tragic. Well, now I've been forced to move out of my chair. I am moving human. <laughs> A um, little bit excited. of cardio, sit down, stand up. <laughs> I'm excited for uh, for the rush. I mean, I'm favoring Redbird Esports just because they seem more proficient uh, off of the rush. I mean, Grathlin was very much known for his May back in the in his days of contenders, although his May didn't look as good as Yubi's when they faced off against some um, Twisted Minds earlier on today. But it's how, you know, in these double headers in sports and esports, how you're able to bounce back from losses or maybe carry those good moments to momentum against a team like New York Excelsior who haven't won uh, a game or a match yet either. Yeah, let's also talk about the previous match against Twisted Minds, because one of the things that really stood out there was uh, how Quartz came in on Colosseo to play the Ash. And you and I were watching that together, Lemon. We were trying to figure out like what the deal with the Ash was. The Bob's super good for trying to mess with the Ramatra, especially during the Annihilation, because it limits the movement that they can have. And we also saw the Ash integrated in the Ilios composition for Vision. So maybe at some point we'll see Vision try and uh, augment the Red Bird Esports Ramatra Rush comp. With that, uh, with that Ash, but I think the turnaround between these series may have been a little bit short for Vision to do that already. Hence, continuing to play out on the cast. That's uh, Distraction Immortality Field, one of the one of the greatest of all time. Go get him, Immo Field. Go get him. I was wondering. Um what DPS Shockwave was going to want to play. The Cassidy, the Hanzo. Obviously, the Hanzo has this one-shot opportunity, and what? it's Rapid with double Icicle headshots. They're hitting them with the question mark. What is happening? I mean, Shockwave with the question mark. Like, bro, is, is this guy for real? Did I, did I just get double sniped by the Psycho May? Or rather, the Grathen May. Here's a quick look at Grathen going absolutely beast mode with the Icicles. There's one, there's two. Easy as they come. That's a GG easy in chat. 
Uh, Wait, is this a replay on the question mark? <laughs> <laughs> Love to see it. Uh, and that's that's Grafin stepping back up, right? I said he had a slower day against you being the double headshot. That's great to see. Um, we're re 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 replaying. There we go. New York Excelsior. They're done playing around. Vision out of position, not next to his shield. Just trying to find any off angle opportunity, and New York will get the full cap off of this. Yeah, Deacon may be a, a little bit keen for an assassination there at the end, but eventually New York Excelsior do manage to execute on a rush and isolate some members. Vision's had a, a bit of a tough game thus far. Only 27% ult charge. It feels like Grafton's been doing a majority of the damage, but we're in early days for King's Row yet. And uh, we might actually see a Hanzo duel down this particular avenue. It's very important to try and control this angle because it provides excellent access to either team's backline. Now going through this choke, gonna be tough. But Grafton, 20% or what am I saying? Just 10% now more. Just close to a blizzard either way. And this is what can just keep New York held at this point. They've been moving fish, having Annihilation soon, but it's Kellen there first. I wonder who's going to be pulling the trigger first. It's Grafton with the blizzard. And Kellen maybe went for Annihilation play. Great punish from Redbird Esports. But one kill is all you're going to get. And now we talk about rush comps on King's Row. Inevitably, you come back to this choke point right here, this arch where you create micro chokes on either side of it when the cart is in there as well, which makes things even narrower and more difficult to navigate. And you're trying to move through here against that May wall as well. There are so many different factors that have to be considered. Double ant matrix, great May walls to try and isolate some people in, but no one looking too unhealthy at this point. Maybe about anyone maybe using a sound barrier as a tempo engage, but maybe needing to use it for this blizzard of Psycho, as no one was able to save moving fish in that moment. You throw the dragon strike as the cherry on top, and that's enough to clear Redbird Esports from streets. Great pressure cycling there from Creative's window, making sure that uh, moving fish, they had to move aside into the bookstore, and then they have very limited means of disengaging from a blizzard, providing that Psycho can get the line of sight from the snowball, which generating it on to the Ramatra. So a great sort of dual phase push coming through from New York Excelsior. Question is, how do they do this now without those additional resources? You're mostly looking at Kellen here to extract value from the Annihilation, but moving fish has one as well. Psycho out of cooldowns too, just not getting heals, forced to use Ice Block, got slowed by the Mantra, Ice Wall out, so Redbird Esports pull the trigger on the Sound Bear Annihilation, moving Fish just blocking as much damage as possible, now Grafton walks up, throws the Blizzard down, and the Dragon, but the Immortality keeps almost everybody up, New York Excelsior did a great job of living through most of that, but definitely split up on their goals during that fight, so New York will have to reset. And that's even with Deco, I believe, not being able to hit the sand barrier onto moving fish. Instead, they had to sustain themselves using the cycling of armor uptime with the Annihilation. Now it comes down to a pair of amplification matrices. I wouldn't mind seeing Redbird have this early pokey. If it's one of the advantages that the Marcha really has over the Reinhardt is that you get a little bit more of this early poke and you can have that kind of rear guard fight as you disengage and try and force out some abilities early from your opponents before they make it to car. The air matrix angle is what I'm looking at here. It's actually quick speed from New York down the alleyway left side. Looks like Moving Fish has placed the shield in time. They've used the main wall from Grafin to try and block some of this air Matrix damage, Shockwave's off angle is so good too. Redbird Esports don't know where to look. They backed away and used the Ant Matrix, but by the time this was used, the fight was already chopped. And New York Excelsior capped point B. And you highlighted, Lemon, the rotation there from New York Excelsior was incredibly important because it was poorly scouted by Redbird, and that meant that Renko had to try and respond to that rotation by popping an emergency immortality field, so it wasn't available for the fight in earnest. New York Excelsior managed to make massive use of that. Hello, Shockwave. Waiting up here, a bounce shot perhaps? No, nothing quite so cool will happen against players who are as aware. Now you got the Dragon Strike. This will split up the fight. This comes up right behind Moving Fish, who still is moving into it and just gets gobbled up. So didn't realize that. You only have eyes at the front of your head. Fun, fun fact there. Grafin, the only one to anchor this card and this contested, but now everyone's being staggered from Redbird Esports. New York Excelsior looking down the barrel of Capping C. You got the initial shield up. Moving Fish has Annihilation. Vision has Dragon Strike, but someone needs that presence on the card. 
Oh, no. And Redbird Esports for Gore! They simply were not there. Lep adds it to the chat just in case anyone had any doubt. Charles the Ninth has visited Three, us once stars. again over here. The Nemesis form with the additional movement speed. Moving Fish wanted to get the maximum possible value out of that Annihilation by, able, by being able to use the Nemesis form first to refresh the armor, get in close and do some damage, and you get the armor again from using Annihilation. Then you try and cycle over to a third Nemesis form during the Annihilation cast. But unfortunately, in looking for optimal efficiency, they found the quickest way to lose a King's Row. Two minutes and 16 seconds now of a new Excelsior time bank. That is a lot. And Redbird Esports, they have a mountain to climb here, but in these mirrors, Redbird, they do have the magic of the Grath and May, which is actually doing incredibly well, actually out damaging vision at the moment. The damage coming from the May is generally a little bit more subdued, but if I had to highlight a stat right now, it's Kellen versus Moving Fish. Kellen at the moment sitting at 6.2k damage compared to 4.7 from Moving Fish. And that's with fairly equal numbers of uptime and deaths, but six final blows from Kellen compared to one from Moving. Kellen is finding these weakened targets who've caught an icicle, who've caught an arrow, or have been maneuvered into a poor position by a boot from Let, and has been able to execute them perfectly. I think this was a, still a good start from Redbird Esports, you know, off of the double kill from Grathin. You lose the fight right after. You got Blizzard before Psycho. You lose the fight right after. So Redbird Esports had some stops, but to goof up that contest at the end is going to cost them some serious time, especially when they had the ult advantage there. So we'll see if they can have a quicker pace now on the attack. Vision. Very much known for his Cassidy, but also Hanzo in his back pocket, and he's shown his prowess in contenders, but Moving Fish taking too much pressure, not having the mate to assist. New York going for even more kills there as Vision is gone. <laughs> and <laughs> set. Is your vision gone? Consider visiting an optometrist. Redbird Esports, I think they need to do a little bit more groundwork for these fights here to buy Vision the high ground that's currently just behind the camera. Because we saw Vision mostly playing on the ground, and that meant that when the walls came up, Vision actually lost line of sight to a fight and had very severely minimized uptime compared to Shockwave, who was playing from a higher angle. Now we have Vision up high, this is going to allow more access to the fight after the walls happen, but Shockwave's trying his best to suppress this. There needs to be a lot of support for moving fish and staying in LOS of your Baptiste is so important. Creative has the Ant Matrix. And this could be how you kick off this fight if you want to slow down the push. And he's already used it actually on a flank angle coming through Hotel. This pincers Redford Esports into a corner. And they throw in the Kelendros in the Annihilation on top of that as Gravel thought that was a winnable fight throwing down the Blizzard to subdue New York during the push. But really it was not the right move for Red Breeze. Oh, this is a necessary kill here, and it does come on. The lab cannot die! 1 HP to 0 from Grathen with the Widow Swap. And now this opens up a huge opportunity for Red Bird Esports because Creative's only just coming back from spawn. Lep is also coming back from spawn. You can buy all the position you want and more on point with an Annihilation good to go. Moving Fish, this is their fight to win. And I think uh, now that Psycho is back, you're looking at a Blizzard. They're flanking through Hotel, coming up behind Red for Esports. And have they, they even scouted this? They've killed Vision for free. Ranko and Moving Fish using ultimates and getting Blizzarded by Psycho and getting no value out of it. New York Excelsior with such a creative rotation to catch Redford Esports off guard. And that's truly testing the communication from this contenders team who are lacking one of their primary callers, a flyer who went over to the LA Valiant. And you're testing out the leadership of Redford Esports who just did not see that coming. Yeah, we need to see Grath and try and mess with these rotations or deco a boot or a Maywall, something to stop New York Excelsior being able to relocate so fast because now, once again, the hatches are battened down for the storm that Redbird Esports are ready to provide to them. The Dragon Strike as well, going to be great for trying to empty any of those locations where Moving Fish really wants to hold up with the Nemesis form. Spamming, I need healing, by the way, on Genji gives you extra healing in the April Fool's mode. And here is Soundbear from Lep. Only it's him and Creative. Wonder what happened there. Now the Ant Matrix still guarantees two kills on the Redbird Esports. And just not ha being able to use the Blizzard in that fight. Not drawing New York into a position you would have hoped for. 
means Redbird Esports only have 33 seconds left, or they could be full health. I have to say again, this could very much be Kellen's year. Another Annihilation is good to go. Kellen has the most killing blows on their team with 11. Redbird Esports up against the wall. There's a Blizzard in the back pocket, though. That's how you shut down Kellen. That's how you bully out that tank, because there's no sound barrier to save Kellen if he gets caught. Ooh. And he uh, grabs another one for a hotel flame. Plays, places the Blizzard behind New York. Using the Annihilation Shockwave kills two. And that will be the nail in the coffin. The pre-GGs from Vision, who's pull, tried to pull as much weight as he could. And was not expecting Redford Esports to not even put a dent onto that point. But congratulations to New York on their first win. And it's a 2-0 over Redford Esports. Well, we had our questions as to how good are New York Excelsior actually, because we saw them get O2'd, but it, it was by the Houston Outlaws, so might not count that much when it comes to the overall power rankings. But now, against one of our contenders teams, Redbird Esports, New York Excelsior are looking a lot more sublime. And in that last fight, I do think that Grathing maybe could have done a little bit more to get value out of that Blizzard, went through Hotel instead, and maybe it got blocked by an Ice War or something, but wasn't able to actually hit Kellen with the Blizzard, and shutting down the main tank with that ultimate has got to be your number one priority, especially when Kellen popped off as much as he did. Yeah, New York Excelsior, I mean, looked good. They're obviously getting a win, but they only have one tank to play around, and it's Kellen, which might be good and bad. I mean, even Dante from from his team kind of spoke about in an interview about how, how cool it is to be a solo tank because you can flex tank, you can flex around it. Kellen is your player of the match for that reason. You can depend on him to flex to anything from the Ramatra to the Winston. And my question for New York is how coordinated they were going to look with this mixed roster. On the other side, you have Redbird Esports, Web Gig, and Moving Fish, two people with very different ways of approaching the game. And I think Kellen and friends are looking better and better every match we see them, you know, reacting to Fitz's hacks, reacting to Psycho's walls. Yeah, ult efficiency is something that has to be explored for New York in their future. They're not looking Looking like a top contender, but this is a long-term plan for them, and I'm excited to see more. One tank to rule them all, and with no coach to bind them. Remember, New York Excelsior are still yet to reveal who's cooking back there in the backroom kitchen. As we look at Kellen's stats, as Winston this match, this was, of course, mostly Elios, but it's probably about equal split time between Winston and Ramaja, considering how quickly we saw King's Row actually culminate. And 3.6 deaths per 10, not too bad at all on the Winston, but the 23.5 eliminations per 10 is absolutely massive. Being able to take part in so many of those dive kills and always making sure the Tesla damage was where it needed to be. Now with kind of a different support line, you might you may just see how different Kellen is going to look now that he has the resources to dive and just true tr truly show what he's capable of. Big future ahead of the New York Excelsior. Up next, we have Wisp versus Washington Justice who have played earlier on today. How are they going to bounce back? How are they going to carry what they've learned today into their next match? We'll find out from the desk first and then an interview and then more Overwatch around the corner.
It's half past six. <laughs> did I did I, I just hear, him serious. did I just hear it's half past six? Is that what Cassidy said? <laughs> did, did I hear that right? No, honestly, this is the best April <laughs> Fool's patch that I've ever put out. It's actually so good. If you haven't played, you should absolutely get uh, a play. Absolutely. Uh, now, for now, though, you have to stay with us. You can go play afterwards. We have one more match to go. And of course, first, we want to break down the action we just saw between Red Bird Esports and the New York Excelsior. Going to be the one saying it. Not the cleanest match of them all. I, it was a match that we played. It was a match. It, it was that a match. Is that we I, and, you know, giving some upside to it, you know, it was it was cool to see the New York Excelsior team coming in uh, with a little bit of coordination. I think 11 King we sort of highlighted. It wasn't the cleanest execution that we've ever seen, but the pieces are there. And that's yeah. the exciting thing for me looking at this New York Excelsior squad is that, you know, when they have their players playing well on their individual heroes, right? Like Shockwave on this Hanzo, I was looking at Fitz come out of the lineup. I'm like, oh, I, I feel like I would want to keep Fitz in, but Shockwave proving to us why he deserves to be in this league and can play well and why he's coming in to play for this roster and you know, Kellen as the solo tank continuously impressing us yep. he hasn't had a great career in the Overwatch leagues so really starting to have some sh uh, shines of life but I, I can't life. believe that after the second match of the New York Excelsior in the Pro-Am you just basically hit us with the talent is there <laughs> Well, I, I said the talent is there without saying those words is, is what but, but I mean, it is, it is true. The talent life. is there, right? Yeah. Oh, look at yeah, the player roster. It's, yeah, it's there. But I, I, I cannot speak. Otherwise, Mitch will tweet at me. So I, I must not say anything. <laughs> I, do, I just still feel like we do have to watch more of NYXL games because it, like the Kellen solo tank, I think we need to see more games and more of yeah. Kellen solo tank to be really sure if it works. But the talent is there. But the talent is there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, one last glance at today's schedule before we wrap up the day with our last match. Contenders team at Wisp will go up against the Washington Justice, who played a phenomenal game yeah. against the Bust Not Rising. And if I were the opposition here, if I were Wisp, I'd be scared. Rocket, no, no smiles like that heading into <laughs> this one. <laughs> Yeah, it, we, we've seen this team. It seems like their identity is very heavily. They want to play that Winston Tracer style with that beak just playing hide and seek uh, as much as they can. So I, I, I think it'll be an interesting look against the Washington Justice because that's how the Justice want to play as well. Yeah. So I expect to see a mirror match and a lot of dive, which is uncommon so far in this program. So it should be a good match, which, you know, Washington Justice should be able to find their first win. Yeah, I mean, if it was any other team, I think I'd... I would say it would be a closer match, but I honestly think it's the favors on Justice side. Just how, because we were all so impressed by Pembest and all of the Washington Justice crew, how they performed in their previous match. So in the mirror matchup, I think it's still going to be a tough battle for Wisp. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's going to be a hard one. And it's important to note that if Wisp do lose this one, they will be out of the Pro-Am. So everything to fight for in this one. And, you know, Washington Justice aren't that far away from them. As much as they aren't the favorites in this match, it can get done. It can get done indeed. But yeah, for Wisp, everything to fight for, as you just said, Custa. I uh, am now ready to see your predictions. Are there any Wisp supporters? Wisp yes, heads? We'll find out. Any Wisp heads in chat? Zoe? Perhaps. I am not one of them. Uh, I am. Yeah. Uh, sorry. I'm actually getting more and more into that Washington yeah. Justice spirit. I really, really love what we've seen from them so far. I absolutely love what we saw from Ben Best. And that's just not me being an absolute Ben Best fangirl as per usual. <laughs> so glad he's back in the league. Oh boy. But uh, I honestly, I think the looks we've seen from them so far, it really bodes well. I think Washington yeah. Justice fans can be super excited not just for the pro-am but for the rest of the season how about you danny uh i'm on the same boat i think i i wanted to go with wisp but after their performance watching justice like i i'm kind of on the same boat i think they look phenomenal i I'm, i am all for bem best and alpha e combo and i think yeah i think it's i just gotta i just gotta go with washington justice I'm going for the Washington Justice as well, but I'm not going to speak about the game. I'm going to speak to the audience. And one particular audience <laughs> member, Reinforce, I know you're out there. You're listening to this. And you said Alpha Yi is getting overhyped. I want you to watch this map because I think the man's about to go crazy on the tracer against Rocket. So Washington Justice, I think I got to go for him. 
Yeah, he'll do it just to to spite reinforce. Yeah, that's exactly. what we're all living for here already. That's what the, that's what we're all about. Now we are ready for this last match of the day. It's been six phenomenal or five phenomenal matches so far. So let's go out with a bang and for all the action. We once more send it over to Harry and Jen. Thank you so much. Yeah, last match of the day. To follow with Cus's point, Alpha Yi versus Rocket, Harry. I know this is going to be like the Tracer matchup, but Floor, I mean, Alpha Yi also went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Decay. Decay is the one who made him sweat. I don't know if Rocket can do that. And it's, it's it feels like an unfair comparison to have like a senior versus a freshman. Ooh, who's going to win? The senior yeah. beat him down, right? We might not have any wisp heads on the desk right now, Lemon, but I can guarantee the two of us are a of Rocketeers. We are big fans of Rocket and his Tracer. On that hero in particular, Rocket is a bit of a menace, but like I said, it's uh, it's definitely going to be a big challenge for Mr. Rocket himself, going up against Alpha Yi, who was able to not only get one over on Decay a couple of times, but also decimate a legendary tier backline of Izayaki and Twilight. And when you think about that, you've got to think about the danger here for a beak. There is uh, a lot of he's for Ralph Wiggum meme right now. I'm in danger. Yes, you are, son. The question is, what can Wisp do to try and rebuff Washington Justice's attempts to dive at the moment? We are we're seeing some silly comps in the Washington Justice camp, mm -hmm. but we've seen that Flora actually in our previous matchup against the Boston Uprising swapped over a lot. Uh, Alpha Yi, I mean, he's not a bad Farah. He is classically a projectile player. This could be reality if Washington Justice are going to give it an attempt. And if so, it's going to come down to Chopper, actually, to try and contain that Farah from some big peaks. And we've already seen a look at Wisp on Li Zhang Tower going all the way to round three, a lot behind Jakaru on the Hammond or the Winston. And Chopper will swap to Cassidy or the Hanzo. But yeah, he may might need that extra mobility if there's just going to be a far raining it down on him. But some pressure on the Alpha Yi, but mostly Ben Vez getting anti and he drops the one, gets the Mega Pack. And it's surprising Wisp couldn't really chase that down. Looking at Rocket to finish off those kills onto the Hammond. Wisp rotate through Coastside. That is the number one rule you do not do on Night Market is rotate around the point against a Farah player. So well-deserved concuss. Great job by LB. Yeah, Ben Best now for you combining their boops there to make sure that Chopper goes flying off the map. Already Rocket's done so much damage. Look at this, 95% towards the ultimate here from Rocket. Has been able to do a lot to try and shut down Flora, but thus far still a limbless for the contenders uh, for the Wisp DPS. Rocket's at, was that a mid-air there from Alpha Yi? Very nice. Remember that Tracer does go down in a single damage boosted Rocket. 156 damage is more than the 150 health pool. So if Alpha Yi can hit those directs and shut down the Superstar Rocket, it could be difficult for Wisp to try and make it into this point. Oh, you're gonna have Barrage as soon as this, as soon as Wisp come out of the choke. You've already let Chopper slip by. He's got Nano finds the final blow onto Alpha Yi, but FD God will have the Valkyrie and the Resurrect. And Justice still come out ahead in this fight. Wisp don't have supports. They got the flip. That's cool. Who cares? It's flipped back over to Justice, who only had to use a Valkyrie to win that fight. So Barrage win condition still available in the next one. FD got good technique there to make sure it was a super safe res away from the nano Cassidy. Chopper definitely has the, uh, the chops, pardon the double use of the word, to actually go head to head with Alpha Yi when it comes to the raw rain. But the thing is, with how long the resurrection takes, Chopper's nano has actually faded away by the time that Alpha Yi returns. Now coming back from spawn once more, the barrage around the outside. Wisp needs to be so careful with their positioning here to make sure that they don't all get caught together by the nano barrage. Nano Alpha Yi, no bubbles there! Way and the sleeper was actually onto Jakaru and not enough to stop Alpha Yi, of course. So, good play from friends of Washington Justice. I think it's really tough to play Ana if you're a beak, like you have a Hammond, a Tracer, a Far, there's so many angles and no one to really protect you with. Yeah, a beak is uh, having to play the hide and seek that Custer alluded to earlier from this Washington Justice roster who are just coming in from all angles. An early bubble here actually to try and get Chopper safely towards point and does force Alpha Yi away for a moment. Okay, some presence on the point. Rocket forces the OT and there it is. Some kills for Wisp. Magnetic grenade, good pulse from Rocket. 
Just have to deal with that D God and flip in the hands of Wisp. Beautiful aim there from Chopper. I think that this Rocket Chopper DPS line is something that a lot of people are going to remember. Future Contenders viewers in the chat right here who want to move over to Contenders North America at some point and watch these guys pop off. Alpha Yi starting the rotation around the outside alongside FD God, of course. While they're actually making this rotation, would be heavily, uh, they'd be taking a lot of damage, but you can't really peek the edges to try and deal with them because you'll get booped off by Ben Best. Ben Best, very low after dropping the mine. Some real estate earned Flora. Pulse Bomb misses Grapes, trying to deny that sound barrier. Meanwhile, Chopper, Nano. They see kind of different camps of ideologies when it comes to nanos, whether you give it to your tank, whether you want to give it to your Cassidy. If you truly believe they can deliver the kills with the investment you give them, Chopper's so low, needs the bubble of Jakaro steps out of it, or maybe the bubble was bursted and Chopper's dead. Alpha E finding random picks. Sound bear from Grapes came in too late as the fight breaks down. It is only 4v3 for the Justice. Alpha Yi pressuring the back line. Valkyrie from FD God could even res Ben Best if needed. But because Jakar is hanging around with possibly a primal, well, that's one way to deal with a monkey. Some crazy coordination there as well from Washington Justice. Ben Best actually catching Grapes with that power drive. Remember that it took a while for the, uh, for the sand barrier to hit the floor. Chopper likely won't be lasting long here against all of this focus time, but still gets Alpha Yi. Still winnable. Three or four of the Justice versus the two. Rocket and Jakaru removed from the situation. Problem solved. 100 to 75 for the Justice. Kind of a, a good start, I would say. The Alpha Yi fire was not expecting that today. Yeah, just uh, flexing over the hero pool a little bit here. Alpha Yi, certainly a fantastic projectile player. I think uh, we noted in our pre-game talk, Lemon, that Alpha Yi is a fantastic Echo. Also a well-lauded Genji, so why not add the Farah to that particular pool? Let's swap over here in terms of the compositional uh, predilections. Jay Karu going up against Ben Best here. Ben Best is one of a few people who, with the hero pool he has, is going to be preferring the Reinhardt. It feels like Reinhardt's kind of been phased out of these rushes now in favor of the Ramatra. Most teams have been moving over towards the Ram, with the exception of, of course, uh, London, because they have the Legends tier Reinhardt in Hardy. And now we'll once again, again get to see how these particular tanks stack up against each other, and Wisp also not running the back. You gotta be careful in this Ram Rhine matchup of how quickly the Rhine shield gets broken down. And that means Ben Best is gonna send it be very aggressive. You do so little damage to Ramatra while he's blocking, though. For Chikaru back at full health. Ben Best playing his shield health very well. Control, point unlocked. Justice ahead. Gotta be careful of these main walls from Rocket who come up behind Ben Best and catch him off guard. But Alpha, as yes, he gets into position to do that to Chikaru, gets punished. Ramatra does a surprising amount of damage in that nemesis form. You have to be wary of that. Only a one-man advantage for Wisp, but Justice have already left. Great side step there as well from Takara, knowing that Ben Best has to actually hit the charge onto this nemesis form in order to make sure that the block can't be channeled. It's a great way to try and shut down a perma-blocking Ramatra. But Wisp now, they have their first control, still waiting for a bunch of their DPS to come back though, so they've got to play a little bit more subdued. That charge was one of all time. You get slept, you get anti. You gotta count those on a cooldowns where they hatch. Dead eye from Flora on the other side. Takara has the shield up too. Justice not getting any picks, and I don't think they can get much of a fight going with Ben Best dead. Alpha E still felt committed to this, maybe close to the blizzard. But now they're getting staggered, and that's so much time lost. Ben Best, they should have waited for Ben Best to get back. He was right there. Okay, so I was talking about how Ben Best's charge is an important, like, flashpoint in the duel between these two tanks. And one of the things that Whisper doing really well is saving a beak's early utility to try and shut down Ben Best during those charges when he can't shield to defend himself. They use the sleep or the anti. Got the ant matrix. Couple fire strikes forced the Wisp backline back. They re-engage off the blizzard. Sound here for Justice to re-engage afterwards. Ben Best starts swinging. Took so much damage from Chopper. Punished at the end. Annihilation from Jakaru, who has his supports there, but not in the healthiest of positions. Kind of a missed call from Wisp there, but at least they were able to extend it to 73. As FD God wants to stagger out some supports, but didn't work out. 
And now we might finally see a, uh, an attempt at a chokehold here with Alpha Yi being able to wall off that door the second that anyone moves on in. Shikaru does have a better poke here, though, than the Reinhardt, who's only got Fire Strikes to try and deal that damage at range. FD got doing a good amount of reconnaissance and intel gathering as well to make sure uh, that Alpha Yi can pre-wall any attempted shenanigans. Now you see the shield down. Benbeth finding the angle for the shatter. Jakara has already broke through. Jakara needs to get sound mirrored. And Alpha Yi lays down the blizzard because Benbeth couldn't find the right shatter opportunity. So Justice did a good job of cutting them off. They still have to catch up in the score, though. Yeah, still many fights that need to be won. And with Terra falling down, what a shot from Rocket. That's the most valuable possible pick. Now Alpha Yi needs, needs to just try and slow them down potentially with the walls. But instead, we're still be giving the space here to get over onto the point. And this could be a critical misplay from Washington Justice as they play for the respawn of Teru. Maywall from Rocket right behind Ben Best. Dead eye to counteract it. Flora gets slept. Still got a shot in. Even his nade was still active. As Justice might have flubbed initially, losing Teru that early. Cool 3k from Ben Best. And this will allow Justice to tie up the score too. So I guess the backing up there was trying to make sure that Jakara couldn't get behind them with a Nemesis form, making sure to preemptively position themselves where they have that centralized cover on the point to try and kite away from any incoming damage. Chopper's moved over now onto a Hanzo instead, looking to get more of these early picks onto Teru, who can set up behind the point with an amplification matrix and put out oodles of healing. Also want to get some fire strikes in there with that place uh -huh. in front of Ben Best and Jakar just gets evaporated and Rocket still makes the call. It's last fight for justice. You gotta throw the blizzard, make the best, best of it. Zephy got drops the barrier, helps Ben Best, drops the shatter, lays them all to bed. Good night, Justice. Take map one. I loved the change there when it came to where the amplification matrix was going down from Terra. It was very much unexpected that he'd put it that deep into the Wisp lines when you know where Terra's positioning, you know that he's positioned there before with the amplification matrix. I don't even know if it was entirely intentional that Terra put it out that far, but it did catch Jakaru by a surprise meant that he could be swallowed up by double damage that just didn't have the block in time for, unfortunately. Wisp did put up a... Pretty inspiring fight, though, in some of these matchups. And Rocket did really well to get that pick onto Teru. Unfortunately, the chase simply was not fast or strong enough to wrestle the point away from a Washington Justice, who've looked mm -hmm. very good today. And I think Wisp are not setting themselves up for success by just one-tricking the Ana. It, uh, teams have proven that at least a Baptiste in the rush is very important for the immortality. And I think that just Ben Best has a bit more time to work with because of that. You're truly testing out the mechanics of Abik to keep uh, Jakaru up on the Ramatra. Because in theory, in the vacuum, uh, Ramatra is looking better than Reinhardt. But the way Ben Best is taking space, being aggressive, forcing out resources, he's diffing Jakaru right now. So Justice are ahead in the series. After this break, though, it will be Wisp's choice of map, and you won't want to miss it.